five minutes to um, present your testimony. If anybody, uh, if you're going to say the same thing that the person in front of you did, uh, it is your right to do that. But if you could just say I agree with the same what the principal about the person in front of you, so we can kind of speed things up a little bit, we'd appreciate that. Um, after the public testimony is held, the uh, petitioner has time to come back up for a, a rebut for. Um, more clarification. After that, we'll close the hearing. We'll deliberate and um, vote on each case. That's how we uh, run each meeting. We're still waiting for one person, George, and um, we'll give him about another couple minutes, and then we'll uh, call the meeting to order. Thanks for everybody coming out, and I hope you all had a safe and uh, happy 4th of July. Also, I'd like to remind the commission commissioners you should have a barcode thing at your desk. That's to get out of the parking lot. If you don't need it, give it back to Madeline. But that's with the new system in there. That's okay. At this point, I'll call the uh, order to uh, the meeting to order. Clark, could you please have roll call? Chairman Wiesehan? Here. Vice Chairman Misselhorn? Here. Commissioner Anderson? Commissioner Berry? Commissioner Garib? Here. Commissioner Hurd? Here. Commissioner Eunice? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, anybody that would pr that is planning on giving public testimony today, could you please rise and raise your right hand so you can be sworn in by <coughs> The clerk, if you're able to stand, please stand. If you're not, just raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true to the best of your knowledge? Thank you. May I have a, a motion to approve the minutes of June 7th? I'll move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. I'd like to, at this point, bring to the Commission's attention that um, I'd like to move that case PZ-1822 has been deferred again until August 2nd. In case PZ-18-28 is our special meeting on July 7th. So I need, first of all, I need a motion to... Uh, is that the... I meant uh, July 12th, excuse me. It, I need a motion to defer case 1822. So move. Second. Motion in the second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. 
I need a motion to defer case PZ1828 till next Thursday, July 12th. So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. That brings us to three cases for today. First case is PZ18-27. I think you're on, Leah. All right. This is a public hearing on the request of Dr. Asan Usman to amend an existing special use ordinance numbers 14028 and 16174 as amended in a Class C1 general commercial district for a hotel to construct a building addition and utilize portions of an existing building for an assisted living facility for the property identified as parcel identification number 1430101007. This property has an address of 2726 West Lake Avenue. I'm just going to pull up some map information. <coughs> So I'll give you the report just to um, show you on the screen there. This is a, a street view of the um, existing Studio 6, Motel 6 property. Uh, the request is to amend this special use to construct a building addition and utilize portions of this existing building for an assisted living facility, which will include up to 70 units in addition to the existing 60 room Motel 6 business. Um, in your report, I have outlined the various development items, and I'll just go through those for your review. The submitted site plan shows um, 118 parking spaces. None of the parking spaces on the site plan were identified for handicap accessibility. There was no land landscaping plan provided. Signs exist for Motel 6, which are, which the uh, freestanding sign is approximately 70 square feet, 70 feet tall, 290 square feet in size. No other signs were proposed with this application. The building addition um, is along Westlake Avenue, has um, an entrance canopy which is set back 16 feet from the front property line. The minimum district setback is 20 feet. The building height is proposed at 46 feet, measured to the tallest point. And let me show the building elevation. This illustration shows both the um, footprint of the building, existing and then proposed. Here, if you can see my cursor, this is the building elevation. It is two-story as far as the dwelling units, but overall height, including the, the tallest point, is 46 feet. The maximum zoning district height allowed in the C1 is 35 feet. The uh, site plan, as I've shown here, includes four points of access, um, three existing plus one additional from Lake Avenue, and a portion of the access drive does encroach into the front yard setback here. Kind of a pinch here. So the property as a whole is, is 2.6 acres, and it is zone C1. It's surrounded by R6 residential give you that illustration. Went too far. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I apologize. Getting turned around. This 
just gives you an a illustration of the zoning. It is on C1 commercial. It's surrounded by multifamily R6 residential zoning to the west and north, C2 large scale commercial to the east, and then along the south border is Interstate 74. Um, to just give you a little bit more detail as the proposed development compares to the zoning district, um, the maximum parking, not, you know, not, now we no longer have a minimum, we have a maximum parking based on the total development, this includes the hotel, motel and the assisted living, has a maximum parking allowance for um, 103 spaces and the proposal includes 118 spaces. So we do have an overparked situation that um, would require an impact fee to be paid. Um, moving a little bit further down, when mentioned the uh, setback, as I mentioned, the canopy proposed on the building addition does not meet the minimum district setback of 20 feet. So there is a four foot waiver requested of that setback. Building height, again, the maximum zoning district is 35 feet. The building is proposed at 46 feet. There's a waiver requested of the building height. And then the uh, last development item is the access with three existing access points. The request for the fourth access is not compliant with regulations. Um, in addition to that access, there is a, the access drive to the property is encroaching into that setback. So there is a waiver requested of that too. To conclude with staff's recommendation, we are recommending approval of the assisted living facility subject to four waivers. The first is to revise the site plan to eliminate one drive approach. We do not accept the fourth drive approach and would request that one be eliminated to a maximum of three. The second condition is to revise the site plan to indicate the number of parking spaces and indicate the number of handicapped parking spaces. As you can see on the elevation, the site plan drawing, we do not have that detail information which we would request. The third condition is to provide a landscape plan prior to a building permit approval that uh, is in compliance with the, land, the landscaping section of the Unified Development Code. And the fourth condition is payment of that parking impact fee or provide permeable par parking surface to offset that, that over parking. Our recommendation does include three waivers that sh which we do not object to. The first is to reduce the front yard setback from 20 feet to 16 feet for that canopy that's proposed on the new building portion. The second waiver is to reduce the front yard setback from 20 feet to 11.5 feet for that portion of the access drive that is in the front yard setback. And the third waiver that we, we do not object to is to increase the building height from 35 feet to 46 feet. Any questions? Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, Commissioner Yes. You know, it appears that they came before us, I'm going to say a year, a year and a half ago, whatever it was. And it appears that we granted the okay to proceed on this the hotel and the assistant. It does not look to me, number one, that the hotel is, is ever finished. And I think a building permit is a year in length. And it, it appears that the assisted living has not been touched. So I, I, I'm wondering, we're city is saying approval, but it appears that They've never come back to us for an extension of either the, the assisted living or the hotel. So what, what, what's bothering me is we go ahead and grant this approval a year, year and a half ago, and now we're back again, and they're saying they, they're looking for approval again. I, I'm really, really having a problem with this one. If I could give a little bit of background to answer those questions. Sure. So you're correct. Um, last year, this request was before you as a same request with the building um, addition for an assisted living, utilizing the existing wing of the hotel and then the hotel um, currently occupied wing. 
Um, the proposed building addition was three stories with the cupola on top, so it was a story taller than it is today. You did, uh, as a commission, vote to approve. The council took action and denied that request. Um, given the, the, the change to the building height, we accepted a, a reapplication for this request, which brings you to today. So I believe, and the petitioner may be able to clarify this, that he's probably not finishing that portion of the hotel wing that I think you're referring to pending the outcome of this application because that, that existing wing is, is identified as proposed for assisted living if approved. Okay. Sure, most of your questions? Okay. Why, why so much of the waiver on the height of the building? I'm sorry? The height of the building, why so? Why the waiver with the height of the building when it's so far above? The, the um, let me show you kind of a, the street view of the general area. So here's the existing motel, two-story. <coughs> Panning around, we have four, five-story existing motel. We felt that there is a mix of uses in this neighborhood. The height, yes, exceeds the C1 district, but doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily out of line with an existing hotel immediately across so the street. Spring Hill Suites, what, do we know how the, what the height was on that building when we... That is a five-story, but it is also zone C2, which does allow for a larger height as well. So there's a different zoning class, but it is across the street, so. It is a different class, and it is across the street. Well, Any other questions for <coughs> the city? I was just going to say, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the height, as discussed, is to the peak of the cupola only, which is a very small part of the facade. Right. Normally, height's me measured to the midpoint of a sloped roof which the rest of the building, so I think the main building actually is in compliance, so Correct. it's sort of an exception, like the building setback is just part of the port cochere, not the main building, so. Right. Um, I, I, I don't want to, my intention is not to complicate things, uh, Leah, I just have a question about maybe um, uh, how, how the Development Review Board is looking at this project relative to other projects that we come across, and that is the, uh, uh, sidewalk issue, the fact that this entire area has no sidewalks on either side of the street, but we certainly have had numerous cases where other special uses or developments have occurred and there is a requirement for a sidewalk or a payment in lieu of sidewalk, and I didn't see that mentioned, so I was just wondering what the DRB's thinking was in this particular case. Um, that's a... Uh, uh, review item through our public works department so they may have you know looked at the totality of the whole area and determined they would not ask for sidewalks at this point and I, I think that's not unreasonable but the fact that there is there are none anywhere yeah. <laughs> in this area yeah. uh, but it seems like in some other cases that hasn't it matter in a sense that even though there weren't any there were some required I was just and question yeah. about consistency. And as I'm sure we're going to hear from Mr. Sparks that, you know, there is public transportation that goes back there. And if this is turning into a, if this does pass and it goes into an assisted living facility, there would be a possibility of people that are handicapped that are using wheelchairs that need accessibility to back of there. And I'm sure Mr. Sparks will agree to that. So, and as Mark had said, as uh, Commissioner uh, Misselhorn said, and then we've had cases where we had sidewalks go to nowhere and we've required sidewalks to be put in. So the consistency that we have here to me does not make any sense. It doesn't preclude you from recommending that condition if you so choose. Dan. Thank you. Any other questions for the city? Eric, George, no. Hearing none, Commissioner is the uh, uh, Dr. Usman? Yeah. Can hear and like to come forward.
you could uh, please state your name and address for the record. Please. Hi, um, my name is Essen Usman, A for Apple, H S A N. Last name is Usman, U S M A N. And uh, the address is 2726 Westlake Avenue, Peoria, Illinois, 61615. And uh, I, I've been requesting about this assisted living project, uh, which is, uh, I think, much needed project for the city and for our community. Being myself, being a physician, and practicing physician in Peoria and in Pekin for last 10 years, I am basically very committed and dedicated to the city and I want to do something good for our community. And I have already track, proven track record by turning this front building, front wing into a motor six, which used to be an eyesore for the city. And I turned into a very nice property and there is no more issues over there. And uh, the back part of the building, uh, there are 60 units in it. And there is a vacant land where the new build will be going. And there will be total 60, uh, 65 to 70 units total for the back wing and the new built out. There will be, there are right now existing parking spaces are 180, 118 existing parking spaces right there. And we are projecting to build 65 assisted living units, 65 to 70 the most. And 60, uh, we have 58 units in the Motel 6. If we add Motel 6, 58 parking spaces, and the rest of the parking spaces, every space will be for the assisted living, which is like total 65 to 70 spaces, and we have enough parking spaces. I think I maybe was not able to make it clear when I submitted the application. There is like the new built out will have only 15, 16 rooms in addition to 60 rooms in the existing building on the back wing. That will make total like 75, 76 rooms in the assisted living area, with including the old wing and the new built out. And out of those 75 rooms, we will definitely need some rooms for the therapies, for their like different, like for their different uh, prayer room, uh, for their uh, movie theater and stuff. Like there, we are projecting 65 to 70 rooms total for the assisted living portion, including both buildings, built out and the existing one. I just wanted to make that clear that the parking spaces will be enough uh, for for the size of the assisted living that we are requesting. And um, the other thing I want to mention, the assisted living, the entrance and the facing is totally opposite to the Motor 6 entrance. They are totally like sitting opposite direction, the way it will be built out. And there will be enough room for the traffic flow. There will be, we have tried everything that see that there will be enough, even if we don't get the fourth entrance on the West Lake, we still have three entrances for this building. And three entrances will be more than enough for any uh, ambulance, any vehicle to go through to, uh, to have a nice traffic flow. There will be no problem whatsoever with the traffic flow. I would just wanted to bring that up. And then the other thing is this assisted living will be a lockdown unit. There will be all the exits and entries will be secured. No one can leave and enter without having special access codes. That's why the Motel 6 portion, those people will cannot be able to interfere or enter into the building because this will be a lockdown unit. And the other thing I, I'm trying to do is, if I have the opportunity to do assisted living, believe me, I will be the one who will be taking care of those residents over there also. If they need any medical help, if they need any medical attention, I am board certified internal medicine and I am a kidney specialist also. And I have extra qualities to do the dialysis and if residents need dialysis, I will be able to offer on site 
that no facility in whole Peoria, even in Illinois, can provide those services that I am committed to provide. And I can guarantee you this will be one of the best assisted living facility when it terms, comes to the physician availability and the physician rounds and the services that I can offer. I am board certified practicing physician here in town for 10 years. And um, regarding the building height, I agree with, uh, like there are, there is only like two story building. The cupola, the cupola that, that part is a little bit going higher, but we can take that down. We don't have to build that. We're just making to build that to make it look like more residential, more homey look. But we don't have to have that over there if that will be a concern. And um, I pray and I hope that uh, your commission will be able to approve this project for our community and uh, I will be able to serve the community very well in that way. Um, I'm here if, I, if someone has any questions from me. Okay, my, my main concern again was after reading through uh, the notes that we had from the last time you were here that the concern was that this there is not going to be any pass through or any connection to the current hotel, to the, the new structure and to the existing structure. And you said that it's going to be locked down. Is that correct? Yes. The building will be, uh, the building will be like uh, a lockdown building. They, I mean, the building will have their own entrance. It will not be communicating with the existing hotel. So the existing building that comes off as an L right now, that is connected to the, the current building, correct? That's correct. And, uh, and those entrances that you have down that hallway, are they going to be bricked over, or how are you going to have those? What is going to be the case with those? The portion that is connecting to the Motel 6 side, where the, there is a link between both um, uh, wings, that we, we can take that down and uh, the, we can leave the door there just for the exit door. Like in case if there is a fire inside assisted living, we will have the, that exit door only, no entrance do, entry door from that side. Because we have enough entry doors from the other side of the building and the new built building. So theoretically they'd have panic, panic doors on those that it could be pushed from the inside of the, the the living facility side and then no, no bar or anything on the other side from the hotel so there would be no access at all. That's correct. There will be no access whatsoever. And then I think also the last time we discussed this, the uh, entrance was a discussion point that we talked about and uh, that you said that there would be a lockdown situation there where there would be a uh, foyer that ha you could step through and then somebody had to let you into the building at that point, into another, another area to get into the facility. Yes, like we will have the keypad or the uh, secured access that only authorized people can enter, or if someone is coming to visit someone, then we will have the receptionist and other people to take care of, open the door. Okay, any other questions? What, um, what might be your time frame on this? Uh, you know, if this will get approved to the commission and then through the council, then I think we will be able to start building uh, the new portion next year in March or April. And the existing portion that we have 60 rooms on the back wing, if I get that approved because that is already built, we just need to renovate according to the uh, codes and city codes and standards, we can start working that within two months. And so that we can, in the whole winter time, we can finish the back wing, which is existing 60 units. Then we have to build the new build where we're going to have kitchen, living area, therapy room, and maybe 15, 16 rooms on the second story. That will be built in March, April next year, till it gets built. I think it will take at least six more months. And by next year, around this time, or uh, August or September, I'm hoping to be, it will be up and running. Planning to do in two phases, like winter, the existing one, and the next year in the new build. Okay. Mr. Usman, uh, do you have any, uh, are you in agreement with 
staff's recommendation, obviously they're recommending approval, but they had conditions and, and the waivers. Are you uh, accepting of all of their recommendations and conditions? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. And those are very possible to do. I mean, I think those are very uh, manageable and we will be able to meet that. And again, I don't want to keep going back to the Motel 6 portion, but believe me, I met every single city code and requirement to when I was renovating that inside out. And there are no citations, there is nothing. I mean, we are 100% compliant with the existing model we have over there. And that's what I will do when I do the back wing. Thank you. Eric, George, and Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody that would like to present public testimony for or against this case? Please step to the microphone. If you could please state your name and address for the record. My name is Lynn Williams. My address is 4428 Northeast Scenic Drive. I am the president of Golden Acres Neighborhood Association. Uh, Golden Acres actually does surround this property that we are talking about. It is not strictly multifamily. We do have residential that we all pass by every day as we go by this property. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and excuse me for referring to my notes. Um, I, I question myself to say, why do we not want this property? Why do we not feel that this addition and the zoning change is appropriate? And I came up with three. The number one is clientele of the Motel 6 versus assisted living. Last summer, uh, Caterpillar hosted an off-road racing series and there were several race cars and tents and it was actually kind of exciting. We stopped to find out what was going on, didn't know anything about it. But all along the back side and a good portion of the front, we had race cars, we had the tents, we had socializing going on. To me that's appropriate for Motel 6. It does not go together with what I would consider an assisted living facility. The second part of it is the definition of assisted living facility. Um, the city produced me a, a definition as what they use and we are completely unsure of what Dr. Usman is considering as assisted living. That is a really, really broad perspective. Um, and the third part of it is we dealt and lived with a residential facility there. Though it was a hotel, his associate allowed long-term people to stay there. It was an eyesore. It was horrible. Crime was up in the area. It wasn't good for the neighbors. It wasn't good for the businesses. We were thrilled when we heard that this property had been purchased. We were thrilled to hear that it was going to become a hotel, that it was going to be revitalized, that our area was going to be nice again. In fall 2016, renovations completely stopped. He had completed the first part of the building and the L shape. Half of it, the front, was finished. They put up the new stucco, it looked great. And it sat there. In January 2017, I attended the, the grand opening. And my surprise here, the former owner is in the front line cut at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Now if I sell my house to someone, I'm sure as heck not going to have the old owner standing at the front door welcoming people in. Which brings up my suspicions as to what the association is of the two. But nevertheless, we were promised that in the spring, the second building was going to be finished, we were going to have landscaping, it was going to be extended stay, it was going to be wonderful. Nothing got done. The only thing that happened in the summer of 2007 is that there were several complaints filed in regards to code for garbage being around the area, grass not being cut, the plastic waving from the building from the windows. 
Um, in fall 2017, all of a sudden we're going we're gonna to fix that second building. It's a completely different facade than the, the Motel 6 part of it. And we did finish that side, except for the fact we're still looking at cutouts where air conditioners would be. Um, at night, the light's shining in, but you can see there's nothing finished on the inside. And it's really amazing that all of a sudden in the past few weeks, the grass is getting cut, the Motel 6 sign that had been run over got picked up, and we have now a beautiful rose garden in the front. But it took us a year and a half to get there. Basically, that concludes us. There is nowhere that you will find a motel and a residential facility together. If there was a little bit more definition as to what the residential assisted living side would be, maybe it would be appropriate. We don't know. We are asking from Golden Acres Neighborhood Association that the current zoning stays as is and that Dr. Usman finishes the project that he promised two years ago to finish that's still sitting not completed. Thank you. Ma'am, I have a question for you, and, it, and it's just hypothetical, but in your opinion as being the Homeowners Association chairman, would you say that um, crime and or whatever has cleaned up a little bit than it, what it was in the I, old I days? I completely believe that. I completely believe We had a lot of transient people coming in, people who are getting out of the jail, um, staying there for whatever reason. Somebody explained this morning at our neighborhood meeting that they were clients from the mission. So that has changed. We still occasionally see the police up there, which is no big deal. You see that at any hotel. Right. But we are not having the issues that you uh, had before as we had before with people walking in the middle of the street with no sidewalks, okay. um, things of that nature. So there has been an improvement, but we still have a long ways to go. understand. Thank you. I'd also like to give public testimony for or against. I'm going to have to get you sworn in before you. Pardon? Madeline. Ma'am, you're going to have to pull that down so you can, there you go. Okay. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Deborah Pendleton. I live at 4402 Northeast Scenic Drive. Um, my husband and I built our home there in 2009. Um, we love the neighborhood, and that's why I'm here, because we want our neighborhood to stay stable. And as Mrs. Williams said, we have we have concerns too about the clientele that will be in that area um, when the previous motel was in operation there were lots of people walking through the neighborhoods people walking through Westlake which has been um, a great improvement in that area since we've been there people walking through asking patrons for money and I think we've got to look at the whole area, look at the people who live in that area, who work, who work to keep their property stable. Our neighborhood right now is fairly stable, but I'm, we fear that one property such as this could completely turn it the other way. And I, that would be a horror to a neighborhood who has made, that's made as much progress as it has. Um, you cannot put certain properties in every neighborhood. It just, it does not work. We also have, I have concerns about where the funding is coming from for this um, property because a few years ago we had the PHA wanted to build a low income area, housing area right in that area, which would have been tragic. So I have concerns about where if, is this government funding, is the PHA involved? Those are things I'd like to have answered. So I think that pretty much sums up what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Roger, do you want us to bring a microphone over there? Okay. Yep. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Well, like you said, I, you know I'm here for the ADA. Name and address, you know the drill. I know. Roger Sparks, P.O. Box 3553, Pure Illinois, 61614. Uh, like I said, I'm here for the ADA. I don't see an assisted living being attached to a hotel, any kind, of either, either with doors or without doors being attached. But if it's assisted living, I'm going to fight for sidewalks because any assisted living needs sidewalks and sidewalks to public transportation. I've said this years and years. I'm currently talking to the Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration, to file a complaint against IDOT, the county, and the city for not putting the sidewalks in while they're using federal funds. So you go ahead. If you don't put sidewalks in, I'm going to go after the city's federal funds, the county's federal funds, and IDOT's federal funds. Because that's what the federal money's for. This building's also going to get plumbing. It falls under the AD under the plumbing. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Next. My name is Jim Williams. Uh, I reside at 4428 Northeast Scenic Drive <clears throat> in Peoria, 61615. Um, I, I look at this project in, in, in various ways. Number one, um, what I do for a living. Um, I'm in environmental services. Uh, I sell um, cleaning equipment, commercial cleaning equipment. So myself, I travel the lower 48 states in the United States. I can tell you, standing here, that I've done this for over 20 years. I have visited roughly somewhere in excess of 1,000 assisted, shared, or skilled nursing homes in this country. Never, not once, have I ever encountered one that was attached to a hotel. The hotel, now, we all know what a hotel is. People are transient that are coming through. So when we say a lockdown facility, an assisted living facility is not a lockdown facility. And I think where we really take, need to take a look at this is when you go into the Illinois State Public Health Administrative Code and start looking at what they're talking about in there. An assisted living facility, and I quote, needs to have a residential environment. A residential environment does not include a hotel in your backyard does not include where residents from the assisted living, when I hear the word lockdown, and I heard Dr. Hussan say lockdown many, many times in his presentation. My problem with lockdown is assisted living, people can come and go as they feel, and they're free to come and go from that assisted living facility, the, the residents that live there. When they walk out the door, they're going to be in a parking lot that is shared with transient people coming through for the hotel. Driving here this morning, I took a look as I drove by, and I look at the site plan on how, um, you know, the, how, how, how he wants to, to facilitate this whole project. The one thing that struck me was this giant 70-foot pole, bright blue with a Motel 6 sign on it, that's actually going to be front and center in front of the assisted living facility. Now you and me, I know I, if I had uh, parents or family members that were in this assisted living facility, I would very much question that. Next question I have has, are we putting the cart before the horse? Has Dr. Hussan applied for and been granted a temporary license for an assisted facility? Because I think we're all in agreement here. And what I've heard several times was that Dr. Usan is establishing, trying to establish an assisted living facility. By Title 77, Part 95, Section 95.4 of the Public Health Administrative Code, no person may establish 
operate, maintain, or offer an establishment as an assisted living establishment or shared housing establishment as designed, defined by the Act within this state unless and until he or she obtains a valid license, which remains unsuspended, unrevoked, and unexpired. By what I'm assuming from here, he's trying to establish something that he doesn't have a license for, number one. And if you go through the administrative code for the licensing, everything that he's got here as far as the site plans have to be in that because then they're going to say, yes, you're going to be granted a temporary license to start your facility. I'm questioning if he hasn't received that or if he has not applied for that, who in their right mind is going to expend millions and millions of dollars to build something that we're not sure if he's even going to be able to be licensed to have this facility because it is adjacent to a hotel? We don't know. Those are just questions I, f I feel that you should ask yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Doctor, you'll have time at the end. At the end. Come on up, sir. Gunther, 4406 North Wilco Drive. I live right across the street from this hotel almost, and it's a dead-end street. Before, it was the hotel there. We had a lot of transit through there and everything else. You used to walk down the street, cut through the neighbor's yard, and go to cut through the union hall. Then the neighbor put up barbed wire fence. That kind of stopped that. Then they turn around and kick out the fence behind the dollar store to get through. Now let's put up a fence all the way through there so you can't get through that little pathway anymore and everything. So oh, the motel, what is that, uh, Marriott, got a gate there that they closed off because everybody was using that. We got a workable handicap right across the street. Those people have to walk out down our dead end street, out all the way around Westlake, the Marriott, down and out before. Now the gates open, they can cut through the Marriott and go down and catch the bus. So just like I said, the crime rate has dropped completely over there since they moved out the thing. We get this kind of stuff back in, we're going to have the same problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? My name is Stephanie Van Oppen, and I actually live in East Peoria, but I'm representing the business at 3004 Westlake Avenue and the house next door at 2928 Westlake Avenue. Okay, we need your current address, too. My current address is 313 Twin Oaks Court in East Peoria, 61611. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to second, I guess, everything that everyone has said. We've, we moved into our building in 2011. It was a disaster. He has made quite an improvement, but we don't believe that that area is going to attract the greatest clientele and changing it to residential to allow any sort of residence there is a bad idea. There is also, I just want to say, there is no public transportation that goes back there. There's no, there's no bus route that goes down Westlake Avenue. It, there's no way to get out unless you go all the way back down and out behind like Target. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm actually here on another case, but uh, I'll fill out a card for this. Uh, my name is Chris Oswald. I'm with the firm of Miller Hull and Triggs. Uh, we represent the shopping center, Westlake Shopping Center, uh, adjacent to that. I've been communicating with the owner. Uh, whose first, uh, I guess, knowledge of this was my emailing him while I'm sitting here in the meeting. Uh, and uh, there's certainly concerns about this, particularly given the uh, state of affairs that were, were there prior to the Motel 6. And while they've cleaned up that property, 
uh, it was a, a, a bad situation for a number of years, I, I recall. And uh, uh, Mr. Cohen just wants to uh, have some time to digest all of this. I don't have an opinion of the project from him one way or the other, but uh, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, uh, you know he'd like some time to study this, if that's at all possible. Thank you. You only need to fill out the sheet once, so you don't have to worry about it. it. Thanks. Anybody else? Seeing none, Dr. Hussein, you can come up, but in if you just give me a second, Leah, do you get something you Oh, um, I, I just wanted to clarify, I, after your question about the sidewalks, I did confirm, and I apologize that it's not on here, that Public Works would recommend sidewalk installation in addition to a pedestrian accessible route to the building. So I wanted to do a friendly amendment to add that condition for your consideration. I apologize it wasn't on there initially, but um, it is, and it does so then very much consistent with their review of and policies for sidewalks. Okay, thank you. Doctor, you have about five more minutes to, for rebuttals. Yeah, um, my name is Asin Usman, and um, I, first of all, I really appreciate for everyone come this uh, afternoon and uh, uh, talk about this project and uh, these are the concerns they have and I appreciate that they have concerns so that we can address those and uh, because my goal is to build and develop that area that will be benefit for the whole neighborhood. My goal is to bring the clientage over there those are going to be our senior residents. My goal is to make this into a uh, medical facility. My goal is to improve the value of this corner of this neighborhood. I mean, I have proven that by spending millions of dollars on the uh, existing portion of this building. And um, I, will, uh, I would like to um, define the assisted living facility. I think someone mentioned that they are here and they don't know what the assisted living facility mean. And uh, it, it does mean the, the senior citizens who are not able to manage their activities of daily living at home independently, they need assistance that someone can help them, help them to take the medications, to take the insulin, to take um, their health care and manage all their uh, food, and their, uh, their um, dressing, the, their cleanliness. I mean, they need assistance, but those are the senior citizens who do not want to go to nursing homes. The nursing homes is a bad idea for some of the senior citizens, and I totally agree with them. And this facility will provide the opportunity for our senior residents who, don't, who cannot manage themselves at home, but they cannot they don't want to go to a nursing homes. And they, they, that's where the assisted living idea comes in. And that's why I'm working for those senior citizens who are not, I'm not taking them as clientage. I'm taking them as residents and our senior citizens and I have a lot of respect for them. And that's the reason I want to build a facility where they can live, make it their own home and be feel secured that they are medically protected, they are in a safer environment, in a very nice neighborhood. And someone was saying that the, it is uh, attached to Motel 6. This building is, I explained before, it is not attached. I still they're using the word it is attached. It is next to Motel 6. The buildings, the commercial buildings or residential buildings, they can be next to each other. And that no, there is no harm in doing something that is next to each other, but because they are facing totally opposite side. And I would like to mention that if this assisted living idea is good and people like to come and stay and feel secure, their family is going to have peace of mind that their loved ones in a facility where they have the physician, medical physician uh, supervision 24-7. And if this model will fly, my goal is to get rid of Motel 6. And that clientage that is there, 
I mean, we don't have the best um, highly professional or um, corporate business in Motel 6. We have very economy class people come and stay there, which I am planning to uh, get rid of those in next five years once the assisted living and that whole complex will be a medical complex. That is my vision. That is my goal. But I have to start from somewhere. But that is not going to impact both of the facilities because both going to facing opposite direction. And um, then um, lockdown, someone is uh, saying the lockdown is the problem. Is, is lockdown mean it will be secured building. I live in my home. I have security system. I have camera system in my home. My home is locked down at night time. No one can leave and enter my home at night time. No one can break the glass. I'm, when I said lo lockdown mean it's a secured building. No one can just run into it. This is your home is protected. That's what I meant. And um, if someone said the pole is in front of the assisted living, that is totally incorrect. The pole is not in front of the assisted living. Assisted living is facing towards the other side of the road and the motor sits on the interstate side and that is not correct statement. And um, um, uh, regarding the uh, obtaining the license, once I talked to public health department, they said once you have the project going, then I will be able to apply them because they need the address, they need uh, the information and then I, they can issue me the license. I talked to them about this facility in Springfield Public Health Department. They have no issues whatsoever to give me the license once I am up and running. And uh, um, uh, the other, by having this facility, we're going to have very nice, very uh, clean uh, clientage. It's like residents. And we will be able to create more jobs for our community, for our neighborhood. There will be more jobs. Like uh, we are expecting, like at least eight more jobs will be created with this facility. And um, basically, by building this new section and converting the back wing, this will beautify the corner of this building. People should feel proud that someone is putting millions of dollars to beautify that area and beautify that building. I mean, it will be definitely, it will be enhancing the value of the area. And we should not be reluctant to do that. And I have courage to spend millions of dollars to um, make improvements. And I have proven that before already. And um, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap it up, please. Okay. Uh, in the end, my vision is this will be an excellent opportunity for all of us, for this city and for this community to have a very prime residential facility for our city, senior citizens. And I think we should do everything possible to get this project approved. And uh, my promise is to make this commitment that it will be the wonderful, ex uh, excellent facility that no one ever had in, f in, in the past. Thank you. Thank you. It's time I like to close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Oh, excuse me. Commissioner Misselhorn, would you like to read the findings of facts, please? Yes. So we need to deliberate on <clears throat> each one. Uh, these are the findings of fact for us to consider for a special use, which is the, this particular case. Uh, the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare. The special use will not be injurious to the uses and enjoyment of the other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted nor substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood in which it is to be located. I would question that. Mm -hmm. The establishment of the special use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. I think that's fine. 
adequate facilities, access roads, drainage, and or necessary facilities have been or will be provided. Questionable to me too. To adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestions in the public streets. Again, that goes along with the, that, the earlier one. It's questionable to me. The proposed special use is not contrary to the objectives of the official comprehensive plan of the city of Peoria. If a public use or a use providing public utility service, that such use or service shall meet a demonstrable public need and provide a public benefit. And lastly, the public use shall, in all other respects, conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it is located, except as regulations may, in each instance, be modified pursuant to the recommendations of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Which would be the any anything that we would grant is waivers. Any discussion on any of the findings of facts? We have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, in, in accordance with the Development Review Board's recommendations and uh, adding the additional uh, stipulation that uh, sidewalk in the public right of way along the property frontage be uh, added as well, as well as uh, pedestrian access from the sidewalk to the facility. Second. We have discussion on the motion. Um, Mr. Chair, I will be not supporting this, uh, this motion due to the fact the, the past participation of the uh, prospective uh, petitioner. So I will not be supporting it based on that. I can, I can understand uh, concerns of Commissioner Eunice, as he stated, and the residents as well about uh, the history of the site, let's say, in the property. It's definitely, I, I happen to go by that site a lot, and um, it is, uh, uh, it, 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 the, the Motel 6, I think the residents even agreed, has been a significant improvement, so we're glad to hear that over what it was in the past. And it, to me, it appears, although it may be frustrating scheduling-wise, that uh, it's pretty clear that the property owner has been, the reason it ha the other wing hasn't been finished is he's clearly waiting on this development. So um, I can understand the questioning about it or frustration with it, but I, looking at the proposal that's in front of us, I think it's, uh, I, 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 my motion was to agree with staff's recommendation. Commissioner Graham. Oh, wait a minute. No, you're, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I will also um, be in favor of this development. The only reason, um, the only thing I will uh, really ask for is a really detailed landscaping plan uh, to be approved uh, at a certain stage to at least show uh, the residents that there is some really improvements going on in there. Um, and as well as a pretty, pretty uh, precise schedule of uh, development. Um, and somebody that's probably, I don't know who will be at the uh, lead for this from the city, but somebody has to follow through with this. Like this. Commissioner. And I'm in support of the project because I've seen what the um, development has turned into uh, under his ownership. Uh, from what it was when we read about it in the paper and things like that. So he's invested a significant amount of money. Uh, I think due to the fact that he didn't get council approval, that was the delay in uh, improvements to the uh, second part of the, uh, of the project. And I also believe the petitioner, as he stated, that probably his long-term goal, with, which is within the next five years, is to convert it into a... Uh, 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 a full assisted living facility and eliminate the Motel 6. Uh, a lot of the, those that spoke didn't seem to have too much of a problem with the assisted living. The, the, the issue is more with them both being there together. And from a development perspective and investment perspective, I 
I think I understand uh, the, the petitioner's approach to this project and uh, with those factors is, is why I'm supporting it. I think it, at this point, I, I, I agree with Commissioner Eunice. I, I can't support this and, and I understand the mixed use, but I think it's too close at this point. And the other thing is, is that and I, if we were going to do this project coming through it, why develop the Motel 6? Why don't we just start as an assisted living facility all over from the get-go? Or why didn't we just turn it all into a hotel? Those, that's my questions. I can't answer that, but as far as I'm concerned, I would not have a problem with this if it came to us at the get-go and said, I'm going to turn the whole building into a assisted living facility and go from there. Uh, the indecisiveness and the, that, I, I just can't support this, this going forward. I would just add that the, uh, you know, from the drawings presented to us, that the primary facades, especially the angled one, is you know an improvement over the real basic thing that you see today, and in, in even the Motel Six. So I think, building-wise, appear, <coughs> appearance-wise, it will be an upgrade from what is there or was there. Um, and uh, as Commissioner Garib mentioned, I think that having, uh, I think it would give uh, residents uh, more confidence and some. Um, peace of mind knowing that the project in terms of schedule was, was really adhered to so that uh, uh, for whatever reason the project wouldn't drag on unnecessarily for numerous years. But the petitioners indicated they were prepared to start on the renovation phase quite soon, which is reasonable. And then my guess is there's probably lots of architectural engineering drawings to be done for the addition and they'll bid it and get it under construction next spring and complete it. That would be the, you know, I don't think we, for most cases, we don't normally question a schedule, uh, but maybe because of well, this particular we past were, history it, it, is why we might. I, I don't think that's a reason to not support it, but I understand fine. that, but again, it, it, it pleading on my case is the fact that if you were to come back and if you would come back to us in a, in a, in a month or so and say, hey, Motel 6 is gone and this is what we're going to do, that's a whole other ballpark, but I just can't support it the way that it is at this point in time. Sure. We have a motion yes. on the table. Mr. Chair, can I ask the city one question? Yes, sir. If this, if this is approved, the petitioner said they probably wouldn't start until March. How good is this? How long is this approval good for? So um, a special use approved by council has two years to establish and become fully operational. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. No. Aye. Motion passes three to two. This goes to the city council on 624. Yep, that's correct. July 24, 724. 724, excuse me. I thought you guys said 624. July. July? Oh, July? July 24th. Oh, A is July. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> July. Three weeks. A couple minutes to get our paperwork done and then... Leah, you're it all day, huh? Yeah. Yep. I'd like to remind the commission too that after some conversation with legal and stuff, we really have to go through all the findings of facts and really discuss the findings of facts so that it's duly noted. I know it's kind of a change in before, but. Can I? 
Leah, how do I pull up the zoning on the GIS site? I'm sorry? How do you pull up the zoning layers on the GIS site? Uh, oh, okay. Carrie Lynn will show you. Thank you. Oh. I went there. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. for just, uh, just that there. Yeah, but it doesn't give me the certain yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I wish there was a way you could just save that. After the meeting. I'll do it. All right. Ready for the next case? Yep. PZ 1827, Leah. Okay. This is a public hearing on the request of Kelly Thompson of Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Illinois to obtain a special use with waivers in a class R8 multifamily residential district for a rooming house, commonly known as uh, Ronald McDonald House. This is for the property with an address of 401 and 405 Northeast Monroe Avenue. Parcel identification numbers 1804-476-006 and 1804-476-007. So, the, the um, picture I have up on the screen is, is, is a dated 2015 aerial view of the subject property, the two parcels. They originally were developed with uh, residential structures, um, garage, accessory structures on each parcel. All of this has been raised and, and, and is no longer um, developed with any kind of structure. It's two vacant parcels. Um, just to give you kind of a point of reference, here's I-74, um, just drew a blank of this temp That's the, uh, Masonic Temple. Masonic Temple, Thank yeah. Um, OSF, or uh, I'm sorry, um, the diocese property is located immediately adjacent and across the street. Obed and Isaacs is a little bit further, kitty corner, okay. I'm um, going to pull up the site plan so you can... Consider it while I talk. So this is the site plan, the footprint of the building on, as it's situated on both parcels. Okay. So the petitioner is requesting a special use for what we're calling a rooming house, is for the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, the facility will include 36 rooms for families with sick children who are needing medical care and access to you know, medical resources. The proposed building is 40 square feet in size, four stories tall, with a maximum height of 65 feet. The development site includes the principal structure, um, an accessory shed structure, if you can see my hand moving there, patio area, and then an outdoor playground that's secured with a six foot tall fencing. As you can see, the site is relatively compact. It's about a little shy than half an acre, 0.44 acres. Um, the footprint of the building along with the other structures leaves little room, but there is four proposed parking spaces on the site which will be located kind of behind the building off of an alley access. One of those spaces is handicap accessible. There are um, there's a uh, refuse or dumpster, garbage dumpster enclosure structure located here. You'll notice that it does encroach over the lot line. Signs are proposed for the property. Uh, one freestanding sign, which is not shown on your site plan, but was requested through the applicant for a monument style sign. Um, the proposal requested 70 square feet in size. Um, there are two wall signs as shown on the rendering, one along the Spalding 
Avenue frontage located here, and the second wall sign located on the Monroe frontage. Let me go back to the site plan. As I mentioned with the, the site being about 0.44 acres, the placement of the building um, does include some setback requests. So the, the structure, the principal structure is set back 10 feet from both the frontage of Monroe and uh, Spalding. Okay. And it's about 33 feet from the rear setback line. The minimum zoning, the minimum setbacks for the zoning district, which is the R8, requires a 15-foot front yard from Monroe, which is the principal front yard, a 10-foot setback from the corner side yard, which is Spalding, and then a rear yard setback of 30 feet. So the rear yard setback is met with a 33-foot proposed setback, but the two other front yards or corner front yards of Monroe and Spalding have a re waiver reduction for 10 feet. There is a setback also requirement for the accessory structure, which would be the shed and the playground area. Both of those are requested to be set back a foot and a half from property lines. The zoning district does require those um, accessory structures to have setbacks from the principal structure, which is 10 feet, um, 6 feet from the side line, property line here and then six feet between any other accessory structure. The proposed site plan does ask for waivers to reduce those accessory setbacks to a foot and a half to the lot line, side lot line, and to eliminate any other setback requirement or separation requirement from other accessory structures in the principal structure. So we have front yard setback waivers for both the principal structure and then setback or separation waivers for the accessory structures as well. The height of the building is proposed to be a maximum of 65 feet. That is within the allowance for the zoning district. The maximum zoning district height is 75 feet. Access to the building is available both from the, um, prin the principal frontage on Monroe, the secondary uh, street of Spalding, and then also access from an alley at the rear. Density, the R8 zoning district has a maximum density of 43 dwelling units per acre. Now we're not necessarily comparing um, a multifamily residential density um, in a traditional sense, but we did want to note that the rooming house or the Ron McDonald house would have 36 total units creating a density of 82 units per acre. Just to show that comparison. So we do note that as a waiver, increasing that density from 43 to 82, and we do not object. Um, just to give you uh, some zoning information, it is R8, which is our highest maximum multifamily density classification. It is surrounded by R8 zoning on uh, the north, the east, the south. It has a parking, P1 parking zoning across the street of Spalding. A little bit of commercial to the south where Obed and Isaacs would, would be situated. Uh, to conclude with our review, the Development Review Board does recommend approval of this request with the following four conditions. The first condition relates to the rendering of the proposed building design. While we recognize that the R8 zoning district does not have building design standards, we can't ignore the setting that this building is, is located. Um, in review of the neighborhood, uh, noting that this is a Northside National Historic District, we are recommending that the building materials incorporate design patterns for the principal structure, which are consistent with the residential, or the not necessarily residential, just the adjacent neighborhood as a whole. Um, 
I, I'm showing you the rendering. It, it's you know, a design that is nice, but we feel not appropriate for this corner property. It's a highly visible corner property. Um, again, the Masonic Temple to the, to the rear, the diocese properties around it, Obed and Isaacs. We're not suggesting that all those materials have to be, you know, fully incorporated in this building, but we do think it, that it could be designed in a manner that would complement, and we just don't feel that this rather, you know, non-residential feel of this building is appropriate. So we just wanted to recommend that we feel that this could be designed in a manner that would be more consistent and compatible with and, and support the neighborhood as a whole. The second condition is to provide a landscape plan which is in conformance with the Unified Development Code prior to issuance of the building permit. The third condition um, is relating to our, the, the request for signage. The freestanding free sign that is not shown on the site plan but is requested through the review um, staff this condition is that it not exceeds seven, five feet in height, excuse me, and 20 square feet in area. And it should be designed to be compatible, again, with that surrounding character of the neighborhood. You will find an example of this with the, the property immediately next door with the diocese and across the street. They each have signage um, not exceeding five feet in height, 20 square feet in area, very much appropriate and, and complementary to the neighborhood. The fourth condition is to relocate that garbage enclosure that I noted on the site plan located in the northeast corner. It is encroaching over the lot line. We cannot support, while there may be an agreement with the neighbor to accept this, our recommendation would be to relocate that within the boundaries, entirely within the boundaries of the subject property. Our recommendation does include and support four waivers that have been requested. The first waiver is to reduce that front yard setback to 10 feet for the principal structure and the rear yard setback to 25 feet. The second waiver is to reduce the interior side yard setback for the accessory structures to 1.5 feet and eliminate setback requirements from the principal structure and any other accessory structures. The third waiver is to increase the number of loud signs from one to three. So those would include the two wall signs and the monument sign, um, or freestanding sign as I call it in the report. And the fourth waiver is noting the increase in density allowed in the zoning district from 43 dwelling units to 82 dwelling units. Where, any questions? Where, where do you have any idea where this monument sign was supposed to be or could be or? I believe the proposal is for the front yard of Monroe. Uh, Ms. Tobin is here and she could probably clarify exactly where they are proposing that location. And I don't even, with this building the way it is designed right now and those huge signs on attached to the building, I don't even see the use for it, but we can ask her. Any questions for the city? Just one quick thing, Leah. Um, the number one item incorporate building materials and design patterns and so on for the neighborhood. I understand all that. Is that something that we that the city can actually uh, enforce in terms of what materials are actually used, or are these just recommendations? So at this point, it's a recommendation through you. It would become enforceable if approved by council. Okay. Thank you. Now it's a whole unified code that we have. Some of, doesn't some of the fenestrations move forward at all into the new areas of the town that weren't covered by a form district? Yes. In your commercial zoning classes, you will find window fenestration. Um, but not residential. And not, yeah. Correct. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I, sure. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Leah, can you explain to me the parking? There's no parking on the premises whatsoever? Yes, so the, the site includes four off-street parking spaces located, um, if, if you see in your site plan, yeah, on I saw the rear. Is that within the code? I mean, is it, there's no variation? There, are, there is additional parking available to the um, property, but it's not subject to the special use. And let me show you where I can find that. Across the street is a parking lot 
So here's the subject property showing you the original roofs that are no longer there. This parking lot, um, and the petitioner can clarify, either is in the process of being purchased or has been purchased by the Ronald McDonald House entity for parking. It is not subject to the special use, but it is uh, our understanding that it will be available for the use of the Ronald McDonald House. Okay. So, so, so it's off. It's across the street, offsite, site, which is yeah. allowable. But we don't have minimum parking required, or we don't have. I keep getting backwards. Right. This is, yeah, this we is don't have. We don't have minimum parking requirements anymore in the code. So theoretically, there is for residential. There's no parking minimums anymore. This is strange. But you know, have a, that's, that's a parking minimum for residential. residential. For residential. But they meet it with this parking. Yeah, yeah. they meet it because because of the four spots in the back. And the, the rooming house classification as a special use falls under the parking schedule of maximum. So there's no minimum, just as, as, as Chairman Wiesahan was mentioning. Now it's a cap, and we're just, the four parking spaces on that, on this property are within that. So there's, there's no minimum requirement, and they don't exceed the cap. You got it? Well, yeah, I got it. I'm just I'm not sure if... if well, the, the, history, the, the history of the Ronald McDonald is normally, it's always maybe one parent there uh, with the child as the child comes out of the hospital, or a lot of times the parent is, is being bused back and forth to Ronald McDonald. We, I'm well aware of that. We have one in Memphis, a huge one in Memphis. So as far as parking goes, there's not a lot of cars that are needed. Okay. Petitioner Ford, like to come forward? Laura? Please, wait a minute, I got to get your t mic turned on. Hang on a second. Please state your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Kelly Thompson. I'm the CEO for Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Illinois. And our current address is a P.O. Box. So it's P.O. Box 5354, Peoria, Illinois, 61601. Thank you. Sure. I just want to take a moment and um, say that words really can't adequately describe um, how excited and honored we are to be at this point to be able to present for your consideration our project to bring a Ronald McDonald House to Peoria. A lot went into getting to this point today, including a medical feasibility study, a meet and greet with local elected officials, and multiple community stakeholder meetings to, to be able to present to you these items for consideration today. Really, the response has been nothing short of amazing. We've had several, a couple thousand positive responses that we've received via social media, email, phone calls, that I can personally say we've responded to every single one. And it has been just overwhelmingly wonderful how welcoming the Peoria community has been to us and to our project. Before I turn it over to Laura, I just want to thank uh, the city and the staff for all the su support and assistance that has been provided to us to the state to help us feel so welcomed into coming into the community. And I also want to thank each of you for the role that you are taking here today in helping us help literally hundreds of sick children and their families as we move to open our doors. So thank you. And I'll turn it over to Laura Tobin, the senior project engineer from Farnsworth, who's been helping us with this. Good afternoon. I'm Laura Tobin um, with Farnsworth Group, 100 Walnut Street in Peoria. Um, thank you for all your comments. Um, we're super excited to work on this project as well, and Kelly's enthusiasm is, uh, it, it, it grows on you. So <laughs> um, I wanted to just take a minute to address some of these other technical issues that we need to take care of. Um, and I'm going to try to make it pretty short and sweet. Um, the first thing, I guess, just the, well, I'll address is the building design. Um, this building's been designed um, through the Ronald McDonald House Charities Board and a lot of the local stakeholders who are um, working to make this a reality. Um, the, you know, capital campaign and all the money, people donating money. 
um, the, the decision was made to go for this iconic, more modern look and not residential. Um, we want to become part of the medical community, not, not a residence, not a hotel. Um, so that's what we're shooting for on, uh, from the architectural design. And you guys all know I'm not an architect, so it's about the limit of my architectural style discussion. But um, we are trying to, as, as, as it progresses, um, this is a bit of a moving target. Um, we're working on design, working on um, donors and things like that. And um, right now, you know, the budget, you know, we're working on these finishes on this building. If the budget allows, we, we do want to add some more brick along the front edge, um, maybe in that brown section there or, or something that makes sense. Um, but right now, we're just trying to focus on getting the, the rooms laid out and making sure we have, um, can get this thing out of the ground. So. Um, it's my understanding, and I know the question was asked, are they recommendations, are they requirements? I think it's all recommendations, and while we appreciate them, we're, you know, the goal is to make it um, fit in more with the medical side rather than the residential side, and figuring, figure, you know, we are in a, we're, not, we're in a residential corner, but it's sort of a commercial corner right off the interstate, right by Obed and Isaac, so um, this is kind of what they decided to go with, and we want to continue um, with this design, so hopefully everybody can kind of get on board with that. Um, moving on, um, I wanted to correct one thing, Leah. I think we are asking for that rear setback waiver as well. Um, I don't think that was mentioned. It's in the conditions, but you mentioned that you know we are 33 feet from the back property line um, right now. But like I said, it's it's a bit of a moving target a little bit. We think we're getting close to having it nailed down, but we asked for that 25 foot setback on the back just to make sure that we had a little bit of flexibility um, in the back in case we needed, we, we, the building grew uh, front to back. So we do still want to request that waiver. Waiver number one. Okay, I just, you didn't mention it verbally, so I just wanted to make sure that um, everybody read it. Um, going through the conditions, um, we do intend to provide a landscaping plan. We're fine with that condition. Um, Actually, it's going to be pretty awesome, I think. Um, they're looking at things like healing gardens in the back, and my little site plan with straight lines on it doesn't give it any justice to what we're planning to do. Um, this is just for zoning purposes, and we're working through all those designs with, um, with our landscape architects and other um, stakeholders. We asked about the, the sign. Um, the ground-mounted sign that we're asking for would be on, kind of on the corner of Monroe and Spalding. Um, I don't have a picture, but we're looking at doing a, like a donor patio up there um, with maybe a seat wall around it or something. Again, it's all being worked out, but that sign would go on the, on the corner there. And the purpose of it is to, um, I mean, I, I realize we have some big signs on the buildings, but we want to get it down to a pedestrian level as well. Um, we've got people, you know, coming from across the street from the parking, coming off the interstate where you're not necessarily looking up, but you're looking, you know, for where you're trying to go. So we're trying to do that. Um, we, you know, we've got hundreds of people visiting this place a year and just trying to make it feel, um, you know, like, hey, you've arrived here, here you are. Um, we do, uh, and, well, I'll, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> um, as far as the site goes, so I guess back to the signage. We are proposing, I, we have 70 square feet in the waiver request. Um, we did a little more calculating on that. and. Um, based on the definitions in the code, I, I think what we really need is 55 square feet, not 70. So I would actually continue to request that waiver of, for the ground-mounted sign to be 55 square feet rather than the 20 that's required. And we also would like it to be taller than five. Um, I think we're looking at probably six feet tall from the ground. So. The request will be six foot tall, 55 square feet um, for your consideration. Um, I think that, I, that, I, that was condition number three. So the, the fourth condition is the refuse con enclosure. Um, we do have verbal agreement from the diocese to put it over the property line, but if that becomes a zoning issue or I understand that the boundary is you know, already defined, that's not a problem. We can move that over. We were just trying to maximize our space back there. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about on the site, we do, we are trying to provide drop-offs, and they're kind of sketched in on the site plan, off of both Monroe and Spalding. We're working with IDOT um, and the city to make sure those can be accommodated. 
Uh, again, because as Commissioner Eunice said, a lot of it is, you know, back and forth from the hospital and dropping people off and uh, quick stops for people making donations and things like that. So the thought is, um, if we can provide a place for them just to pull off the pull off the road and um, you know go directly into the building, that that would be ideal. From a parking standpoint, um, Ronald McDonald House Charities is purchasing the property across the street, and that's where they do intend to park. Um, but we did want to provide as many spaces as we could in the back of the building. Um, you know, as we kept looking at the circulation, it's not much closer from the back to the front than it is from across the street. But um, they are planning to have that uh, parking lot available as well to their guests. I think that covers most of it. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. When I saw the newspaper article and I said, oh my gosh, way to go. But I'm going to have to agree with the city right away. Why the institutional look? You're not that far. I mean, you're farther away from a hospital. You're trying to give care that you want, uh, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, uh, a, a nice, peaceful, restful place for the parents that be stressed free from, and you are in a basically historical district down there with historical buildings that are there. And my psyche would say, hey, I want something that's calm and refreshing instead of institutional and reminding me where my child is. So uh, that was the, that's my only sticking point, Laura, really. The rest of it, I'm for, except for the third sign. <laughs> I, I, you got those big signs on the building. It's great. You can see them from the interstate. You're going to be dropping off, like Rich said, and like you said, probably 90% of the time. Why need the sign down there unless you're trying to appease the donors that are giving the money to you? And we've all been involved in that n numerous times. Um, I guess I'd be okay with the 20 foot the way that the signage regulation is, but anything other than that, I can't really support. But those are just my opinions. And see what everybody else is. I think the project is well needed and well have for a long time. So. I think, it, I think it's a great project. It's needed. Uh, you take a look at those youngsters in that hospital. You take a look at those parents who sometimes are away from home, staying with that child. And I tell you, congratulations. I think it's a great project to the city of Peoria. Thank you. I'm the only one that doesn't like the design, but that's OK. Well, I'll make a comment about the design of it. I think it's a festive design, really, and I think it kind of keeps the children in mind. I understand the city's perspective in terms of the historic area and things like that, uh, but the attention that it draws and for what Ronald, McDon Ronald McDonald House represents, I think the look is kind of fitting uh, f for that. Okay. Any other things? We'll <clears throat> talk about it in discussion. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Anybody like to give public testimony for or against the case? Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the petitioner's request uh, along with the uh, Development Review Board recommendations. I would strike item one, uh, incorporating building materials, uh, but I would also include those waivers. So allow the signage as big as they want it? Uh, no, I think the city, I, I agree with the city on the signage issue, so I would keep that the same. Second that. Just clarification. So you're striking out number one. That means you're approving it with two, three, and four without one? Mm. Yeah, I'm just striking the one on the requirement of the building materials and design patterns. I feel like they can work that out. If city council wants to decide something different, of course, they'll, they'll definitely do that. But if, but if we, just as a clarification, but if we don't have that in the, in the motion, they can design whatever they like, right? They can design the building any way they want. Anyway That's they correct. Want. Yeah, I, I I'd like to have the, the, the feel and the architecture of the downtown and the historic area at least somehow reflected. I, I love the design of the building, mm -hmm. totally. But I'd like to have some 
architectural concepts incorporated that reflects the, the historic. <coughs> that is your motion, Commissioner Hurd. That's the motion on the floor. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the motion has been seconded, and it is with all the striking number one. Mr. Chairman, just a friendly reminder. Um, I thought you did the findings of fact. Yeah, we will. First, okay. Yeah. All right. We get there. <laughs> so, shall I read the findings of fact, Mr. Yes, Chairman? Please. This, this is a special use. Findings of fact for a special use. The established maintenance or operation of the special use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, morals, or comfort, or general welfare. And do all that. Would not. The special use will not be injurious to the uses and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted, nor substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood. Would not. It, it would not, except for, again, depending upon how somebody that lives in that neighborhood would say that it sticks out like a sore, sore thumb and does not you know, apply I, to the rest of the I think there's a lot of, well, there is subjectivity to that, obviously. Right. There's, guess, I would agree there's subjectivity to all of said his intent was to be uh, the modern adjacent to some historic buildings, but uh, even some of the diocesan buildings, they're not, uh, you know, historic. They have architectural features that are more traditional, let's say, but uh, I think there's a lot of good examples of contemporary modern architecture adjacent to uh, older areas in, I'm not in this those context. The, the next item is the establishment of the special use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property. No, but it adds to it. Adequate facilities, access roads, drainage, or necessary facilities have been or will be provided. Yes. They will. Adequate measures have been taken or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so design is to minimize traffic congestion. They will. Yes. The proposed special use is not contrary to the objectives of the official comprehensive plan of the city. No. Nope. It is not. If a public use or use providing public utility service that such use or service shall meet a demonstrable public need and provide a public benefit. This one certainly provides a significant public benefit. The special use shall, in all other respects, conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it is located. It does. It those are the finding of facts. Anybody have anything else they want to add to any of those points? I, I would just say it, it sounds like you know clearly the uh, it's a it's a, 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 a appropriately popular and uh, well thought of project. And again, congratulations to. Kelly and the, all the people that have been involved in this, I'm looking back, I'm amazed that there hasn't been a Ronald McDonald House in our city prior to this. It's just, it's only the second one downstate as I understand it, except for Springfield. So it's pretty, uh, it's, it's well overdue. Um, it seems to be, to me, very well situated adjacent to the two major hospitals. And it's a, uh, uh, the, the, the property on which it's on, there was one historic house which burned down. The other property was a, uh, you know, a derelict property, essentially. This is going to do nothing but increase uh, uh, the, the uh, attractiveness and desirability of the area. It's a much needed uh, use. And as far as the architectural style, which is the, uh, the discussion, uh, main discussion point, I, uh, I, I completely appreciate anybody's, uh, you know, opinion of, uh, I, I don't think there would be anything where people would say it's 100% uh, loved or accepted, but I, uh, as, uh, as Laura pointed out, what we're looking at, although I think they're, you know, their intent is to largely adhere to this rendering, this is a preliminary rendering, and with, with enough funds, there will be probably more masonry incorporated into it. And I, I, I have faith that the organization will do all they can to, uh, it will be a high quality project. Uh, this is not a cheap project to develop. Um, I think that it will be a, sort of a gateway into that area and it is an extension of the medical facilities that are in that area. So I think uh, 
uh, but having said that, I am in completely in favor of not having a large monument sign. I think the, the renderings make it pretty clear that this is the Ronald McDonald House based on the, the, uh, the, the signage on the building. And this, generally speaking, is not a, I'm sure there's certain occasions where there's donors or visitors, but it's not a lot of people just decide to drop by the Ronald McDonald House, like a, like a retail establishment that needs signage to identify itself clearly. Uh, for people who just decide to go there. So I, I think that the large, iconic signage on the building, that's the intent shown, will more than adequately uh, identify the building without a larger monument sign. So I'm in, I'm in favor of the motion. I just want to make myself clear on a, on a, on a couple points. I, I do like the design of the building. I like contemporary, modern architecture. That's just the way I've been. I do like it. I, I just want to bring everybody back to the table that this commission is not really overseeing all that stuff unless there are federations and things that are in the code that we have to deal with in the code. We only have to deal with the code. So what the code says and what they're asking for waivers and because of what you said, Mark, that this is just a rendering and Laura is asking for waivers to go, I don't want to see the building creep to the point where it's over all the waivers and we have to come back and slap your hand later, which we know won't happen because of, this, because of the project, because of what the city does is a complaint-based thing. We have rules and regulations that are inside the ordinances the city, that the city has, and we try to keep to those things, and I hope that you will too, and that the building will not go to anything that is not to go. I love the project. I, I, like Mark, I'm surprised it hasn't been here before because I just remember the old family house up on the corner where Peoria Ford used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, how far back I think now. Um, back up there, which I thought was a, you know, a good deal too. So we have a motion on the table. We have a second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Good luck, you guys. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just, it just, we vote on this, but I just thought it was appropriate to say, too, that it's, I think it's important to point out that there hasn't been any formal, official, or public opposition from the you know, Neighborhood Association or the North Valley Neighborhood Association or historical organizations about the style of the building that I've heard of or wherever, and they certainly weren't here at the meeting. So I think it's important to keep in mind. So this will go to the City Council on July 24th. June. Thank you. Give us a couple minutes here and we'll... Yep. This is a public hearing on the request of Raid Badon and Fred Yaya of Big Ray's Express Lube to obtain a special use on the Class CN Neighborhood Commercial District for vehicle repair and service for the property located at 705 Northwestern Avenue, parcel identification number 18064790678.
I have the um, zoning map up on the screen for your review. This property is located on the west side of Western, um, across from uh, single family residential with R4 and then adjacent to CN neighborhood commercials in north and south and the west, the property. The uh, parcel is a little bit less than half an acre in size, 0.4 acre, and it is developed with a commercial building formerly for Speed Lube. Get to the street view. So this is the big map street view. You can see the existing building structure, sign, clearly designed and utilized for uh, vehicle repair and service, which is your, which um, more specifically an oil change facility. The proposal is to occupy and use the existing building as it is currently constructed. Uh, to give you a little bit of detail about the site, these are existing conditions within the property. There are 12 on-site parking spaces, one of which is handicap accessible. Um, given that this is an existing, just an uh, existing condition site, I'm going to note some. Uh, non-compliant code items really because this is built prior to some current code requirements. So I'll note that as I go through, such as in the parking uh, line item, the 12 on-site parking spaces are available, but there is no bicycle parking provided that is required today of the code. Uh, mechanical equipment uh, is uh, not screened on the site. That includes your ground and your rooftop. So a waiver is asked. I'm going to go back a little bit. Not only for the bicycle parking, a waiver is, is requested for the mechanical screening to not be rescreened or remain as, as um, developed. Landscaping on the site. The um, petitioner has provided a landscape plan after meeting out on the site with uh, the manager and a an, uh, landscaper, they are providing a landscape plan that incorporates and, and includes existing landscaping with trees and shrubs. Um, this would fall under an alternative landscape plan. <coughs> Given our current regulations really focus on tree plantings, the petitioner's uh, landscape plan would like us to consider uh, shrubs, which are existing. They are proposing three new trees along the Western Avenue frontage for the front yard requirement. We have no objection to that plan and, and support the, the proposal. For signs, there is one existing 25 foot tall, 79 square foot in size freestanding sign that uh, is this existing sign. Um, the applicant's proposal also includes banners on all light standards within the boundaries of the property. We have no objection to utilizing the existing sign, and banners are an allowable sign, signage on, on light standards. Uh, the existing lighting as installed are, I believe, a uh, wall pack on the building. We have no objection to that with the uh, caveat that just to ensure, as with any exterior lighting around a property, that it is shielded or downlit where appropriate so that it doesn't spill over or, or light up any adjacent properties. Um, that's with any kind of commercial lighting, we would ask that, and that's compliant with the code. Setbacks and yards, the existing building and parking lot as constructed um, to allow for the um, you know, placement of that building as it is designed, so no, no objection and no change there. It is a single story building. The maximum zoning district is two stories in height, so there's no uh, um, issue with that. And then access and circulation is provided both from Western Avenue and Roman Avenue. And there's an, uh, kind of an alleyway behind the building. We'll get to that here. So it's, it's well, well access and circulation is, is acceptable. So with that, kind of a summary of that whole proposal is the applicant is requesting the special use with existing conditions, with a, a landscape plan through the alternative section of our code, which we have no objections to any of that. Um, with the Development Review Board does recommend approval. 
with the condition that there is an existing handicap parking space that does need to be updated for appropriate signage. Just ask to include that in the review. And we do, as I uh, mentioned, not object to the following four waivers. The elimination for the requirement of bicycle parking. The ex um, second waiver is to allow for the existing freestanding sign to remain with no changes. The third waiver to allow existing exterior lighting as installed, provided that it is downlit away from residential properties and pu the public street. And the fourth waiver is to allow for the existing building and parking setback in place of a required building line, which is what the CN zoning class would require for new construction is that you're building it to the line versus having it set back as this was originally designed as. Any questions I can answer? I got two, I think. First of all, explain to me the bicycle parking thing. This is the first time that I can ever remember even talk, even when we were talking about changing it to no lower limits. I don't ever remember anything about bicycles. There's a provision in our code that um, has bicycle requirements. Just get to that. We can. So within the um, parking schedule where we um, you know, proceed with minimum parking, maximum parking, handicapped parking, we do have a provision for the number of bicycle spaces related to the number of off-street parking spaces provided. And it's very much similar to the handicap ratio, where for every 25 regular parking spaces, the code would request one bicycle parking space be required. So why haven't we discussed this in any other, like the previous two cases, or I mean, we're not talking about bicycle parking there. Uh, just in keeping with the probably residential or, um, commercial aspect, because the other two are residential, so it doesn't Speak. apply. Mm -hmm. And then I'm assuming the property behind this building where it's grayed out, that's all West Pe City of West Peoria, correct? Correct. Yeah. Leah, uh, I was curious. Um, Seeing that the you know sign Big Rays Express Loop is on the building now, what's sort of the nature of the project? Why are, why is it coming before us at this time? Or um, I think the petition could probably speak to that a little bit. Um, there may have not been the same understanding with the with the applicant that because of the um, vacancy in the property, it did require the special use to be re-reviewed. Okay. So over tw uh, 12 consecutive months, it was, uh, it was vacant? I think it's been, yeah, possibly even longer, I don't, but yeah. Okay. But and there wasn't the ability that, that's, to. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for the city? Petitioner would like to come forward? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Christopher Oswald of Miller Hall and Triggs for the petitioner. Uh, I also have uh, Mr. Daniel Wilson back here to my left. Uh, he's the manager of this uh, particular operation and the other stores that uh, Big Rays are opening, and, and he can answer any specific technical questions. Uh, but I wanted to start out by uh, addressing a uh, point that Leah had made. And first of all, I, I do want to thank uh, staff for working with the developer on this. Uh, as we got into this process. However, uh, I do want to just state on the record that uh, we object to the idea that we had to go through this process to begin with. Uh, and I understand that the nature relates to whether or not the business has been operating on the premises uh, for more than 24 months prior. Uh, and this speed lube is one of a number of stores in the area. There's two in Peoria, uh, one in Pekin, one in Canton. Uh, one in Jacksonville that these guys are working on. And uh, uh, they were all owned, I believe, I'm speaking correctly on this, um, they were all owned by the same operator, the Speed Lube, that uh, uh, for this particular site obtained a special use back in the mid-90s, uh, constructed that site uh, as it's currently situated, uh, 
and operated that up until uh, recently. I think it may have changed hands one or two times. Uh, but the idea is this, this business went bankrupt and wasn't operating, but the facility never changed. I mean, I, I think you would find that if you went into this facility, and when these guys went into the facility, there was still product on the shelves uh, because they had just ceased to operate. But there's never been an intent to change this from what it is. Which you can, is we can understand and appreciate what you're saying, but you have to also understand that the city has rules and regulations and that we can't, con we can't guarantee who's going to go into that building or whatever, and that's why the, the process is, is the way it is. Oh, I, 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 can I, only, I, can, I can only understand, I can only tell you is that you can formally write something to the city council, to the, to the manager, and, and have them take a look at, at it and go forward from there. But until this is, and you know, this is a, a no-brainer case, yeah. okay, because of what the, what the deal is. But it still has to be reviewed because of the length of the time is, and we can't do anything about it. You can, you can write the city manager and the, and the council and yeah. voice uh, your opinion. I uh, understand that I'm just making those statements legally because I, it's my opinion that, that there's not been an abandonment of that use, but look, it's a no-brainer. I think we all know that. I mean, uh, I want to try to keep the time short, but I do need to make a record of that while I'm here. Uh, you know, with that in mind, I think you all have a pretty good idea of what, what is intended here. They want to just use the building as it's presently uh, situated under, with uh, existing conditions. Uh, and staff has worked well with us in, in terms of uh, agreeing to the waivers for that. There's one that I, I wanted to point out uh, that's not specifically referenced, uh, but if we could make a general waiver to existing conditions, it would probably cover it. Uh, the section number is 4.3.4G of Appendix A, of the Unified Development Code. It talks about not having these, uh, not having a wall of the building that doesn't have any windows on it. Well, this building, there's at least one wall that doesn't have windows on its existing construction. Uh, we believe that wouldn't be necessary. I, I talked to Leah beforehand. I don't think they have an objection to that. I just want to make sure we're clear uh, on the waivers that uh, that we're asking for and and being granted. Um, Thank you. Other than that, unless unless the the board here has or commission has any questions specifically, I don't know that I need to take a lot of time. Any questions, guys? None. Thank you. Anybody like to provide public testimony for or against? Seeing none, close the hearing. Do I have a motion? <coughs> yeah. Do I have? Uh, Findings of facts first. Time. Again, special use findings of fact. The establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, and welfare. None. Will not. The subject uh, special use will not be injurious to the uses and enjoyment of other property in, in the immediate vicinity, nor substantially diminish or impair property values. None. Will not. The establishment of the special use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property. Will not. Mm. Adequate facilities, access roads, drainage, and or necessary facilities have been or will be provided. They will. Adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress, etc. They will. The proposed special use is not contrary to the official comprehensive plan of the city. It's, is not or is is not contrary, excuse me. If a public use, uh, basically this does provide a public benefit, a demonstrable public need as a retail outlet, service industry, uh, and the special use shall in all other respects conform to the applicable regulations of the district. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion passes. 726. Or 24, excuse me. I'm going to get the date right, right, one of these. I'm going to get it right one of these days. Hmm. Got the right year. Next though. month at the next meeting. Is there anybody that would like to address the commission at this time? Come forward. Point six, election officers we put this off last time. We're going to, I think we need to get it taken care of, guys. Okay. Anybody want to see any changes? 
and I'm willing to stay on. Thank you. Mark? I'm Everything stay the same. personally very happy with you as chairman, and I'll be happy to serve as vice if everyone is okay with that. You need to make a motion, please. Moved. Second. You get that, Madeline? Yep. We're keeping things the same. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Move for adjournment. So moved. <laughs> Second. Oh, the first case, okay. Same sign. See you guys next month. Gee, it's going to be August already. Next thing you know, we're... Uh, uh, what? Yeah, we'll see you next week, right? Yeah, we'll see you on Thursday, uh, next Thursday, yeah. All right, we have that one case. Main Street.